I want to welcome everyone to our annual luncheon commemorating National Crime Victims' Rights Week. Thank you so much for taking time out of what I know are very busy schedules. We appreciate all the, uh, the ongoing support from the community. I believe this might be our 18th luncheon, 18th year we've done a luncheon. Um, so right now and all this past week, uh, other victim witness programs and allied professionals all across the state and across the country are having events like this and many other types of events. Um, some are having field days, some are having uh, proclamations read, Board of Supervisors events, luncheons such as this. <clears throat> and all around the country, everyone is recognizing victims' rights. And so this year's theme is um, <clears throat> Serving victims, building trust, and restoring hope. You know, when people, a lot of times people ask you, what do you do for a living? And when I say victim's advocate, it's kind of an interesting response you get. <clears throat> and there's kind of this ongoing joke in the field that we're tissue toters or hand hold holders. And we are, that's what we do. And, um, but there's a lot more to it than that. Many years ago, victims didn't have any rights. They weren't recognized. They just had to show up in court and fend for themselves. And we've come an awful long way since then. Almost every county in the state of Virginia has a victim witness program, providing a wide variety of comprehensive services to victims and witnesses of crime. <clears throat> and I've got two very good friends that I'm, I'm really delighted that are here, Virginia Cassia and Cindy Gatewood. They're also directors of victim witness programs. Um, Ginny is with Fredericksburg Victim Witness and uh, retirement is in her sights. I think if I'm not mistaken, Ginny was probably one of the first victim witness directors to be hired in the Commonwealth of Virginia. <clears throat> Cindy, former director of a victim witness program, has retired, but she can't get away from it. She still volunteers. So I really appreciate two of my colleagues and two long, long-term friends being here. <clears throat> and they know and they understand what it's like to be a victim's advocate. You know, it's interesting, um, the reputation of being a tissue toter or a hand holder. But you know what, I'll just tell you something, just something small. When you're sitting in a courtroom with a mom or a grandmother who's at a preliminary hearing because their 19-year-old child was murdered, and she starts to weep, and you hand her a tissue, or you gently reach over and you put your hand on hers, or you put your hand on her shoulder, may not seem like much, but it does make a difference. Because we don't do that because that's what we're obligated to do. We do that because we're compassionate, and we're empathetic, and we care. I can say that in almost 20 years I've been doing this, like Ginny and Cindy and myself, we do this job because we love it. And it's a blessing to be able to get up and enjoy going to work every day. So we help those victims and we do those little things that matter because we genuinely care about victims of crime. And we feel like we're making a difference. It's often a thankless job. It's often a job that flies under the radar. Many times people don't understand what a victim's advocate is unless they work in the field or work in the criminal justice system or unless you've unfortunately been a survivor of crime. So, to get, but it, it doesn't, it's not just a victim witness program. It takes an entire community. Everybody in here, we're all in this together. Everybody's connected in some way or another through our criminal justice umbrella. And together we do make a difference in helping victims of crime. And we do make that difference with the little things that matter. So as we move forward as a community, my pledge and my challenge to you is, is remember that victims are going through a very difficult journey, victims of all crime. So we can all do our part by just showing a little bit of compassion and a little bit of care, even though we don't understand why she goes back to the same guy six or seven times before she leaves. I know officers have to show up at the same place over and over again and, and you get tired of that. But the dynamics of victimization are, have so many layers, it gets very complicated. But in the end, they're victims of crime. And if we show a little bit of compassion and a little bit of care, 
will make a huge difference in people's lives. Even though we may not see that difference right then and there, I think we make an impact by the little seeds that we plant. <clears throat> so together we commemorate National Crime Victims' Rights Week. Thank you all so much for being here. We appreciate all of you. We appreciate the support. Uh, we have some wonderful guests that we'll introduce here in a few moments. Uh, but now I'd like to ask pa Pastor Adrian Sledge if he'd come forward and offer the invocation over our meal. Let us bow. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity and this privilege to be in your presence today. We lift up every victim and survivor of violence, Father God, continue to touch their families, touch their hearts, touch their spirit, and touch their minds. We lift up every leader that's in this house today, Father. We ask you to cover and give them guidance as they continue to do what they've been called to do and that's to protect and serve. We ask you to bless the food we're about to receive, Father. May it nourish our minds, our souls, and our body. May we all come together as one to fight against the violence, to fight against injustice, and fight against anything that's hindering a harmonious community. In your name we pray, amen. amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if I could, could have your attention, please. Uh, please continue to enjoy your meal. Um, we're going to continue on with the next part of the program. Uh, we're very privileged and honored to have our special guest speaker, the Honorable Senator Bryce Reeves. And I'll say that it's a man that doesn't need any introduction because as people were coming in, everybody that I tried to introduce him to, oh yeah, I've already met him. Oh yeah, we've already met him. Oh, I know that person. So obviously very well known around here and in our community. Um, the senator served honorably, uh, served his country. Um, I know that the senator is also very active, active with military and, and veteran affairs. Um, he's done an awful lot of work with the General Assembly. I think we all know he's definitely a family man and cares deeply about family values. He's got a beautiful family. Uh, Senator Bryce Reeves is also a very strong advocate for victims' rights. Um, so it is my honor to introduce to you our very special guest speaker, the Honorable Senator Bryce Reeves. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I, uh, <clears throat> it's really an honor and a privilege to stand here and speak to you, but I'm going to talk from my heart a little bit because I, I think I'm around those folks who understand uh, when I talk today what I'm talking about. And I'll never forget that first feeling when I donned my uniform as a police officer, knowing I was fully prepared to go out after the academy and protect those folks I was sworn to protect. And I knew I was prepared by the best people out there to be the best, but little did I know that some incidences just could not be replicated in a training environment. You know, as a former Army Ranger who has seen the worst of humanity in times of armed conflict, nothing, and I mean nothing, ever compared to the violence I witnessed firsthand when a loved one decided to take out their rage and their anger against their significant other or their spouse. And I, I, I truly remember that first domestic violence uh, case I had to work and how angry the husband was and how much he decided that he needed to tune up his wife after coming home from a long day of work. And it still haunts me today. And it was my first malicious wounding case. But what really troubled me about it was not the blood or the stitches or the disfigurement, but was about a week later when I got another call to go to that same residence. And I found that individual that was a victim of a crime there again. And when I sat with her, I just felt sorry for her because she felt that she had no place to go, had no help, had kids, and that her life was okay with it being the way it was at that 50% of good times. So to me, it's important that victim witness counselors and programs are available and that they're funded and that people are ready and standing by to provide aid 
when it's needed most. Some of you know me from uh, years past before I was even elected and know that I used to work undercover narcotics. And so I want to tell you a, a couple of war stories. I was working undercover one time up in Dale City, and I know we have a huge problem with methamphetamines to opiates to heroin to uh, you name it now. And so I was knee deep in, into that business. And I remember uh, I was working a surveillance vehicle running the wire on an undercover who had gone into a house and we're listening to the tape and I'm listening to a 15 year old sell heroin to our undercover and then also help his mother shoot up and then she would help him shoot up and so that was the icing on the cake the third buy that we got out of that house so we went down and we got search warrants. And we hit the house about 2 a.m. and we woke everyone up and they had big Rottweilers outside and you can understand kind of those of you in law enforcement are kind of doing your head like this know what I'm talking about. And when we got to a certain room I just remember there was an eight-year-old little girl there who was the only responsible adult in that house. And it hit me like a ton of bricks because when she got up and I don't want to gross anybody out she had feces in her hair from where the dogs had been laying on her bed. And there was a dead ferret in a cage. And I'll tell you, at that point, I thought I was going to lose it. And I know I'm looking at my cop friends and I'm saying, they've been there and they've done that and they've seen that. And so we fulfilled the requirements of the search when we filed it. And our Commonwealth attorney at the time, Sandy Sylvester, and some of you may or may not know her from Prince William County. And uh, Mary Grace, Grace O'Brien, who is now on the appellate court, was our drug prosecutor at the time. And they just couldn't believe what we articulated in that search warrant. It was like that. Literally, you could not see what the color of the carpet was because two in except for two inches from the wall, you could tell what the color was. It was the only place there wasn't dirt or feces from these dogs being in the house. So Sandy decided that we should go back out because she wanted to see it for herself, couldn't believe the pictures, and we did that. And I will tell you, if it wasn't for Prince William County's victim witness, I don't think that little girl would have ever gotten the help that she deserved. You see, crime has no boundaries. Young, old, man, woman, black, white, poor, rich, country, city, doesn't matter. It happens anywhere at any time. Because why? There are bad people out there. That is the world in which we live in today. I told a couple of folks coming in, I just got back from a visit with our guard who are forward in the war on terror uh, in theater uh, in the country of Qatar. And every day they stand on the wire to protect us all the way over here from bad people. But I want to tell you why and how I believe wholeheartedly about making sure that we take care of victims of crimes because it never hit so close as it did for me about two years ago in the General Assembly as your senator. A dear friend of mine, and, and she doesn't mind that I use her name now because uh, we passed a bill and, uh, with her name on it, uh, Detective Deborah Toomey, who has since retired from the Prince William County Police Department, came to me asking me to do something about doctors who assault their patients. And, and Debbie was sexually assaulted by her doctor but not just her alone, there were 17 other victims that fell under prey under this doctor. The travesty was that the law wasn't adequate enough to take away this man's license and within a year and a half he was practicing medicine again. So with her help, we proceeded to pass a bill through the General Assembly and, and for those of you who don't understand what that's like, uh, if you're a victim of a crime, the first time you go in to testify on a witness stand, and I see some competent Commonwealth attorneys here and uh, assistant Commonwealths, it's a scary place. If you look at the police officer in the room, the first time they had to get on the witness stand, I can tell you, it's unnerving. Imagine what that's like to do it at least 20 times and relive it. And it wasn't more clear to me other than after we got it through the subcommittee on um, courts of justice on the Senate side to the full committee of courts of justice to where we got to the House Courts subcommittee and I realized Detective Toomey was no longer Detective Toomey but a victim of a crime. 
I'd worked with her all those years as a police officer, but I never viewed Debbie as a victim. And every time she had to give her testimony to that body of individual legislators, she was reliving that crime in her head. So what I want to tell you is my charge to you today is very simple. Be aware and be educated. Know your rights as a citizen and as a victim. If all else fails, know that there are a team of individuals like this guy here and his whole team ready to fight for you. And know that you're never alone, ever. It also doesn't mean that we should let the bad outshine the good. And for every man that's out there who assaults a woman, there are tenfold of men who are caring and loving husbands and fathers. And that's why I'm so thankful to know that we have qualified, caring, professional law enforcement, first responders, attorneys, and community folks that are in the community that treat victims with dignity and respect, that can help victim rise above the horrors from their attackers and thrive as survivors. But let me tell you something, law enforcement and your prosecutors cannot do it alone. Without those folks who are victims and the wherewithal to pay attention as a victim of a crime and remember the details about their situations and be able to recall those, and more importantly, be able to stand and face their accusers in court, they can't do their jobs. Anyone who's ever been a victim of a crime knows this. How you're treated doesn't mean or determine your worth. You're specifically made by our Heavenly Father, and I will tell you, you have a purpose in your life. You're not a victim, but a survivor. You have it in you to rise above your circumstances and lead a full and joyful life. You have a mission to spread, and that mission is to help people and help impact their lives and never give up. See, I understand that recovery is not a process where you snap your fingers and suddenly everybody's fixed and it's back to normal. You have to make the decision every day, every day, to get out and get up and continue the fight. That takes courage and strength, and I tip my hat for those of you who are here today that are victims of crime. As your state senator, I have worked to protect victims and equip our law enforcement with the tools necessary to do their jobs efficiently. When they have the resources they need, they are better able to serve you and I as citizens, the people they've sworn to protect. This last year, I was part of a bipartisan session. They really got a lot of work to done. I'm proud to tell you, the governor signed Senate Bill 339, which makes the prima facie evidence for stalking a little bit easier for these folks to prosecute, as well as uh, make some real progress with regard to protective orders and guns. No one, no one, in my opinion, and I've been there five years, has done more for our law enforcement and those folks who are victims of crime than I. Because I've lived it, I've worn it, I've seen it, and I've been part of it. This luncheon is an incredible way for to honor those victims and those survivors of violent crime and, way, and, and raise the awareness of those facts. Mark, I want to thank you personally for inviting me. And those of you who've come to the luncheon today to spend just a little bit of time making a difference. As we move forward, uh, I know I'm on the uh, Executive Board of the Crime Commission. Uh, I'm on the Sentencing Commission, the Juvenile Justice Advisory Commission, the Offender Population Forecast uh, Committee. So I'm infinitely tied to our law enforcement and criminal justice system. So in the future going forward, if you all have anything, and I mean anything that has to do with how you do your jobs or inefficiency in the system, I ask you, please come to us. My, um, my legislative director is in the back. Her name is Cassie Horn. Um, we really do take this as a serious uh, cause of action for us. I just want to thank you for the support you've shown me over the last five years for the opportunity to be reelected. You all really came out for me in Culpeper this last year. You know, the first time we won, uh, we squeaked by. Uh, this year we won uh, by 62%, and that says a lot to me. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, from my family to your family. Thank you for allowing me the honor and the opportunity to serve as your state senator. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule to be with us. What a wonderful speech. There's nothing more I need to say about victims' rights. The Senator has covered it very well. We appreciate everyone that has come here to, uh, to support this event, National Crime Victims' Rights Week. I do want to introduce our head table. We've got Mayor Mike Olinger is here. And I know Chris Hively, town manager, chief of police are here with the town and, and town members, thank you guys for being here and for your support. Alexa Fritz, our board of supervisors chair and congratulations to our new county administrator, John Eggerston is here. John, thanks for being here and congratulations on your new appointment. But John's been with the county for probably pushing 30 years now. So uh, very much welcome, very much appreciated. Obviously, Senator, thank you. Pastor Sledge, introduced earlier, thank you so much for being here and for the invocation. We got the Honorable Paul Walter, our Commonwealth Attorney. Paul, thanks for being here. <clears throat> and last but not least, and, and thank you all. I don't mean to leave anybody out. There's, we appreciate all of you. Appreciate the, the town police and, and the state police are here and Sheriff's Office. Uh, Honorable Judge David Barreto, thank you for taking time out of all of your busy schedules to be here. We appreciate all of you. I'd go around and name each one individually, but that would take too much time. So thank you everybody for being here. We do really appreciate you. <laughs> so speaking of law enforcement, about 15 years ago, we had just moved in to our office at the Victim Witness Program, and I had court, and I parked on Cameron Street, and went in, just a quick hearing, and that quick hearing took about three hours. And I came outside and I got in an argument with a lady for giving me a, a parking ticket. Oops. And that, that young lady that I got in an argument with is Norma McGuckin. <laughs> but she was really sweet back then. She was very polite, she was very kind, and she still gave me the ticket. <laughs> but um, so, Norma and I, I, we do go way back, uh, but I actually knew Norma, I think a little bit before that or close to that time because our sons are the same age and our sons went to kindergarten together. So Norma has gone from the parking attendant for several years here in Culpeper and has truly earned her way up the ranks and is now the, ser the sergeant with the police department of community policing. <laughs> Every year, when we have our luncheon, we have a panel of us. Richard Brooking helps me a lot and a few others and, and Paul Walther. And we throw names around for the Vic annual Victims Advocacy Award. And we had several names as we always do every year. And it was fun this year because as we brought up Norma's name, everybody immediately said, yeah, that's the one. Yep, perfect choice. So it was a really easy choice, unanimous decision. Norma is not just a great police officer, but she's a great person. I cannot tell you how many times I have called Norma and said, Norma, I've got a victim that doesn't speak any English. Can you help me? If it's a sheriff's case, if it's state police, if it's a victim who hasn't been through the system before, it didn't matter. It didn't have to be with the town police. Norma was quick to be there to help and, and translate for us. She would come over or she would do it via phone. Um, so we've had a lot of interaction together. We've had cases that we've worked on together. Norma really does show true compassion and empathy for victims of crime. She cares so much and it shows in her personality. And it is really an honor and a privilege to uh, present Norma with our award this year. And I'm really in a pickle because I think if I let go of this podium, it's gonna fall. <laughs> so, I don't know how I'm gonna grab this award and... Uh, <laughs> I got it, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Senator. <laughs> I've got the Senator holding the podium. For me. <laughs> so, Norma, come on up if you would, please. So, Norma McGuckin, it is, it is my honor and privilege on behalf of Culpepper's Victim Witness Program and of all your friends and colleagues here to present you with the 2016 Victims Advocacy Award. In recognition and appreciation for your care and attention to victims' rights and for your tireless and courageous work, your commitment to victim services brings honor to Culpeper County. Congratulations.
obviously Mark is still upset about the parking ticket. He's broke the podium. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you so much. I'm really honored that you guys were, you know, nominated me for this award. But it's not about me. It's never been about me. It's my job as a law enforcement officer. Our motto is to protect and to serve. Those words we take to heart. We often encounter people when they have already been victimized and have experienced unimaginable, unimaginable pain and suffering, physically and emotionally. As a law enforcement officer, we are witness to the horror, horrors or that human beings can inflict on other human beings. These experiences or events can leave victims feeling hopeless, scared, and oftentimes they have no one to turn to. When these citizens and members of our community call us for help, we try to go above and beyond to provide the help that they need. As a law enforcement, it is our duty to make sure that we give them back the sense of security that was taken from them. It is our job to make sure that they feel safe again. But our job, we can't do it alone. It is only when we reach out to, community, to organizations in the community and other agencies that we can make this happen. With all these agencies, agencies and organizations coming together and offering their services, our job will be much more difficult. Together, over the years, we have worked really hard to make a difference in the lives of many victims. We help pick up the pieces and try to help them put together their lives together. Their lives may not, never be the same, but only the one thing that they know and they, they know for sure that they can count on the support of the community. They know that they can call on us for assistance and they know that we have, they have the support of the public servants that are here to protect and to serve. Thank you. Thanks again, Norma, and congratulations. As is typical of Norma, very humble. Um, <clears throat> I also want to thank, um, we had someone that donated this entire facility and donated all the food to honor survivors of crime. And um, that person refused to allow their name to be mentioned. So we'll just say thank you to an anonymous donor for providing all of this so that we could, we could enjoy this, this luncheon to commemorate National Crime Victims Rights Week. <clears throat> So that, that concludes our event. I want to thank you. Um, feel free to hang around and mingle. Now, those desserts, they are real. <laughs> Please partake. And I, and I know someone that went to a lot of work to make those special desserts, so, so please enjoy those. I know there's also coffee available. If anyone would like coffee, um, just raise your hand or get the attention. One of the staff will bring coffee around. And um, again, thank you to John and Alexa and the, the board and the county for supporting Culpeper's Victim Witness Program for all these years. We appreciate the ongoing support. Thank you, Paul Walther and the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. Uh, we have a very close working relationship together. We're, we're working either in their office or at our office or with them pretty much on a daily basis. So it just goes to show the unity that a community to, can have when we all work together. So. Paul, we really appreciate your leadership and your help. And of course, law enforcement, Norma, thank you, and the town police and the sheriff's office and state police. We've also got um, one of the captains with Germana uh, Community College Police here. So again, it takes an entire community to make a difference. And I am so proud to be a part of Culpeper County. This is really an amazing county to, to, to work in because the unity here is pretty special. So together we can make a difference. And um, lastly, I just want to thank the Honorable Senator Bryce Reeves for that amazing speech. And again, for rushing from overseas to get back here and making time out of his schedule to be here with us. So we genuinely appreciate you. And please know that, that the community of Culpeper is here to support you. So 
Thank you, everyone. Please hang out, mingle a little bit, and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.